I'm Tom Davidson with Ripping Kingston Systems. As an accomplished IT firm, we focus on delivering competitive advantage while reducing your overall IT cost. Two of our more popular offerings are our Google Apps and Virtual CIO. I invite you to visit our website or call for a free consultation. Hi, Brian Thomas here from the 55KRC Morning Show. Hope you're having a great Thursday. A little reprieve from the heat today, thankfully. Those who've been sweating it out the last couple of days. And an interesting conversation today. A lot of discussion about the judges overturning a Proposition 8. Of course, that was the, I guess, the banning of homosexual marriage. Um, a lot of deeply held convictions on that. Uh, equal Protection Clause and Due Process Clause was the basis. And that's the first time the United States Constitution has been used to uh, deal with the issue of gay marriage and whether or not uh, gays can get married, and, and, and lesbians, of course. Now, my personal uh, position is don't care. It's not going to impact me an iota. It does not their, their activities and actions do not impact me an iota. And as grown adults, I believe they are free to choose, and ultimately that perhaps a union that is, uh, will protect them respectively insofar as the laws of marriage protect men and women when they get divorced, that will also perhaps lead to some stability among gay couples, and which may arguably, and I don't know, reduce the amount of disease because of the level of promiscuity that goes on. Bottom line is, I know ultimately it's not going to impact me personally. It does not change my personal convictions. It does not change my personal morality. It is theirs. It is their personal conviction and their morality. Now, the question or the problem I have is, if the powers that be then use the Equal Protection Due Process Clause to protect homosexuals from, uh, or protect their right to get married, use that argument, the, the guaranteed right to do that, as a way of oppressing your individual beliefs about whether it's appropriate. Can you make a church accept something that they do not accept that is contrary to their religious doctrine and dogma? I don't know how a government can do that. But you can make book that that is the next step, and you need to concern yourself with that very fact. I don't mind gays and, uh, 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 and, and lesbians getting married, but I sure don't want a government to come in and say that because of that, you, particular religion, are going to be deemed uh, a homophobic uh, religion. Ergo, you're going to no longer have tax-exempt status, or you're gonna have, we're going to put you out of operation because you are filled with hate against a particular segment of society. These are personal decisions. These are decisions that exist in your head and your relationship with God and your church's dog doctrine and dogma. So I'd never want a government to come and impose their will on a church, much in the same way I understand a government, state or federal, seeking to impose its will or, by denying the right to marriage, impose its will on other people. Very difficult moral legal reality going on here, but one is a slippery slope and has, can go, go dangerous places. Head on the blog page, get a copy of In the, uh, in the President's Secret Service. Talk to the author today, Ronald Kessler. Good guy. Updated the book. It's in paperback, now including some details about the Obama administration. So another opportunity to get some information from the blog page, 55krc.com. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.